The Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's a privilege tonight to rise to talk about a project uh, that we'd like to see in our riding for a floating dry dock, in particular in the Alberni Valley. Uh, we have the only deep sea port on the west coast of Vancouver Island, and we have an incredible company, Canadian Maritime Engineering, that's working in partnership with the city of Port Alberni, with First Nations, uh, that's well supported in our region, and we'd like to see it expand and, and create a floating dry dock to fill the void of floating dry dock spo space that's uh, currently under incredible demands and pressures. In fact, I was at the Pacific Northwest Economic Region Conference just in 2018, Mr. Speaker, and they cited that uh, there was $3 billion a year in floating dry dock uh, needs for repair and maintenance, Mr. Speaker, uh, annually. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, they cited that capacity was, was full. In fact, uh, when this project first came forward, BC Ferries uh, provided a letter of support and cited its support and the need for floating dry dock space. In fact, Mark Collins, the CEO and president of BC Ferries, visited the port himself, and he, he wrote a letter of support and he was pleased to support the application because we know that right now, currently, BC Ferries is set out to uh, do three and a half to four billion dollars over the next 12 years in infrastructure for new vessels. And they spend about 150 million dollars annually on ship repair, Mr. Speaker, which is quite significant. And um, we know that this vision has been long standing. I approached Transport Canada a few years back to start talking about this uh, important opportunity, and they cited that there was no current funding mechanism or, or, or uh, available for a floating dry dock. Yet we've seen huge amounts of, of money invested through the National Shipbuilding Strategy, which is absolutely critical and important, both in Vancouver and Montreal and Halifax. Yet we've seen smaller communities, maritime communities. We have the longest coastline in the world. So it's absolutely essential that we support marine infrastructure throughout our coast to coast to coast uh, communities, Mr. Speaker, like Norway has done. And Mr. Collins actually cited the, uh, how, how Norway went on a robust program of developing their small ports for ship maintenance and, and repair. And as a result, they've built more resiliency in these local communities. Now, nothing to take away from those important shipyards, but we've heard from Irving and your home province, and they're, they're citing that they need $300 million more to fulfill their obligations for the national shipbuilding strategy. And, and I'm not saying that I'm opposed to it, Mr. Speaker, but I've got to say the frustration is real. Well, we've got an opportunity to fill dry dock needs right on Vancouver Island for, you know, the Pacific Northwest, and it may not be for, uh, you know, military, but certainly we could help offer the federal government supports when it comes to maintenance for Coast Guard or building or, or, or repair. We've got an incredible skilled workforce right in Port Alberni. We've got electricians, we've got welders, people that are actually working also outside of the community that could return home. Um, and again, Mr. Speaker, it is the most affordable place in southwestern British Columbia. Now, right now, the province of BC is embarking on a very important and historic study to look at shipbuilding, to uh, support the shipbuilding sector uh, in British Columbia. In fact, uh, right now, the, the Minister of, Min of Jobs, Economic Recovery, Ravi Kavan, said they're developing a comprehensive shipbuilding strategy to allow BC to take full advantage of coastal strengths and build a healthier, more sustainable marine economy. Mr. Speaker, the province of BC is going to need a federal partner. And I want to know that the federal government's going to be there, that they're going to be there to provide resources, help solve problems that we have. And I'm hoping that tonight we're going to hear from the minister that they're going to be there to work with us and our communities. And First Nations is an important step towards reconciliation in the community where I live. And uh, there's no better place, I think, than the Alberni Valley for this project. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health and the Minister of Sport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank my honourable colleague and friend for his, uh, for, for his advocacy, for his, his neighbours. And uh, I'd also like to thank him for his recent work on, on his private member's bill on decriminalization. I think it's so, so important. And, uh, and I, was, uh, I was proud to support it in the way that I could. Let's put it that way, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I have a lot of respect for this, uh, this, this member, and um, I want to support that work as, as best I can. Uh, he's probably wondering why the Parliamentary Secretary for Health and Sport is answering a question about uh, transportation. I'm filling in for a colleague tonight, um, and he will also uh, appreciate that I've spent some time on the water, so maybe I can uh, do it some justice. This government's overarching goal is to ensure that Canada's transportation system supports our ambitious uh, economic growth and jobs creation agenda. Canadians require a safe, reliable, and sustainable transportation system that facilitates trade and the movement of both people and goods. 
To advance sustainable growth, Canada's system of Canadian port authorities is responsible for leading infrastructure development on federal port lands. And working at arm's length from the federal government, Canadian port authorities are governed by boards of directors who are relied upon for setting the strategic direction and managing operations, including securing financing for infrastructure improvements. Recognizing that global chain uh, supply chains continue to be disrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, labor shortages, the growing impacts of climate change and other key factors, it's a priority to ensure that Canadian supply chains are resilient and fluid. So building on the National Supply Chain Summit that was held in late January, the Minister of Transport also created a supply chain task force who is consulting broadly with industry, associations and experts to examine key pressures and make recommendations regarding short and long-term actions to strengthen the efficiency, the fluidity and the resiliency of transportation infrastructure and the reliability of Canada's supply chains. In addition, the Government uh, of Canada has dedicated considerable funding to Canada's trade and transportation infrastructure through the $4.2 billion National Trade Corridors Fund. As of March 2022, approximately $2.1 billion in funding has been announced for 102 strategic projects across Canada, which are leveraging more than $4.4 billion in total infrastructure investments from private and public partners for air projects, marine, rail and road across every province and territory. Through the National Trade Corridors Fund, the government took immediate action to address current supply chain challenges and launched a dedicated $50 million call for proposals to relieve supply chain, supply, supply chain congestion at Canadian ports, which were closed in February. In addition, the government continues to invest to improve Canada's trade corridors through the call for proposals to increase the fluidity of supply chains, which closes at the end of March. Furthermore, the Canada Infrastructure Bank has announced important investments into port infrastructure, including $300 million into the Contracourt Container uh, Terminal at the Port of Montreal. The government is investing in Canada to promote rapid and sustainable growth, and that's why the government will continue to support Canada's ports. Thank you to my honourable colleague for this important conversation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The honourable member for Courtney Alberni. Mr. Speaker, um, it wasn't long ago we, we had a Conservative government that removed a tariff of 25% for those that wanted to build ferries outside of our country. That money could have been used to developing shipyards in our country. Um, we hear from Conservatives, they want faster and cheaper ships built outside, outside of Canada. We know we can do better. Right now the Liberals still aren't investing in small shipyards. I appreciate the effort that they're making with the sh National Shipbuilding Strategy. But they haven't done that. We've invited minister after minister of transport to come to our community, to meet with the Port Alberni Port Authority, to hear about this great opportunity, to meet with First Nations, City of Port Alberni. We've had support from, like I said, BC Ferries and many others. We've done a third party uh, assessment of this proposal and it's coming out with solid support. Um, yet still no supports. We know that the, we don't currently deal with chip breaking, for example, in the right way. This could be an opportunity as well for us to fulfill our environmental obligations, which we aren't fulfilling. So I want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank the member, and hopefully we'll, we'll be able to work together on developing this important piece of infrastructure. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, like the member, I, I have important infrastructure projects in my riding as well, including uh, ones for transportation. And, and I, can, uh, I can tell them that we've benefited uh, from, from recent investments. And I'd be happy to work with the member on future projects in his riding as well. Because the Government of Canada is committed to supporting Canada's ports as they're critical for Canada's economic recovery from COVID-19 and beyond. And consequently, the government will continue to invest in infrastructure at Canada's ports. We look forward to supporting key port infrastructure projects with the additional $1.9 billion, which was announced in Budget 2022 for the National Trade Corridors Fund, because to date the National Trade Corridors Fund has committed nearly $500 million towards port and marine infrastructure development proposals across Canada to support Canadian trade, which is leveraging more than $1 billion in total investments with public and private partners. This government has always aimed to invest in Canada to promote strong and sustainable economic growth, and Canada's ports will play a key role in achieving this goal in the future, and through the proposals they are able to advance under the National Trade Corridors Fund. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.